Warning, the following podcast contains Fs followed by Ucks. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Hymns, My Sheets Rock, Adam and Eve, and by Exploding Tree Insurance. Because holy fuck are his supporters stupid. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hey there, this is Jay Burley 66 letting you know that as a Twitch streamer and moderator for Apex Legend X Cuddy, the internet has proved to me that we did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men and women. And some of us might be going backwards. Knock it off. Thursday. It's September 17th. And it's Constitution Day. Yeah. So we double checked. Nothing in there about not wearing a mask. Mm -mm. No, nope. nothing. About nope. that. Quite a bit about voting, though. Good deal. Yep. I'm no <laughs> illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from presidential debate podcast host Joe Rogan's New Jersey, <laughs> Cincinnati Swing State, and Good Husband, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, John MacArthur calls our bluff. David A.R. White is going to have to give away half of the money from my free trial at Pure Flix for Heath59, wow, you're stupid, this works every month at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> and Don Ford will be here in case the show didn't have enough middle-aged white guy voices. But first, the diatribe. The conservative Christians I know are the most terrified group of chicken little motherfuckers I've ever encountered. Bill O'Reilly tells them the atheists are coming for Christmas and they post armed guards by the nativity scene on their lawn. Their politicians utter the word socialism and they suddenly hide under their bed from their own access to fucking health care. Their preacher tells them a goat monster is going to torture the ghost that operates their brain levers and they give them 10% of their income in perpetuity to make it stop. For years, I've had to be the skeptical voice of reason, as I'm sure many of you have had to be reassuring my religious relatives and friends that no, that doesn't cause autism. Laws count regardless of how you capitalize your name, and Facebook will not take ownership of all your photos at fucking midnight. You know, I'm always the person saying it's not as big a deal as you think, and I've been correct with a 100% track record on this kind of shit, so I'd love to think that that would earn me some credit, right? If this pandemic has proven anything to me, it is that that is not the case. The most paranoid people I know are all but universally ignoring this very real crisis. The same people that were terrified of Ebola when the nearest case was 5,000 miles away. You know, the, the, these people with more practice being terrified than anybody else I know, they cannot be bothered to give the barest hint of a shit about a legitimate crisis that's already killed more Americans than World War I, the Vietnam War, and trans people using public restrooms combined. And, and, and I sit huddled in my fucking house, having left my yard twice in the last 186 days, desperately pleading with my in-laws to, you know, maybe opt out of the bowling leagues and turkey shoots this year. I, I can't help but marvel at the role reversal. Their brains are so primed to be terrified of every little thing, and yet here they are in the presence of a circumstance that legitimately merits their fear, and they are fearless to the point of stupidity. Why? Now, it's tempting to explain this away by pointing out the lifelong existential dread their religion forces upon them, right? Like, demons are battling for their souls 24-7. They could wind up in hell, right? I mean, you know, even if they're good, almost everybody they love is probably had in there. You know, the Great Tribulation is perpetually right around the corner. You stack all of that shit on top of the political angst that conservatives are expected to shoulder, Right, the caravan of rapist immigrants, the impending rise of Sharia law, unfettered gay access to wedding cakes. And suddenly you've got to imagine like world threatening events just become a background hum. Right. But obviously that can't be the explanation because they have no trouble whipping themselves into a frenzy over imaginary shit. Even now, they can still fear. They do still fear. And some of the shit they fear is even real, but they don't fear this. Well, I'll tell you what, one rule of thumb that I find always comes in handy when you're perplexed by Christian behavior is to ask yourself, could there be a sinister explanation for this? And it turns out that in this instance, there is. 
See, it's not like Christians just all spontaneously decided to ignore this threat. They were told to ignore it. They were ordered to ignore it by the people on high who speak for the author of the universe. Ignoring this threat was handed to them as a test of their faith. And as long as you don't impart any humanity or compassion onto the Christian leaders pushing this like damn the virus full speed ahead attitude, it's easy to explain why. Their whole thing rests on their monopoly over your fears, right? You're supposed to fear hell. You're supposed to fear Satan. You're supposed to fear the secular world beyond the protective walls of this church. You're supposed to fear eternal damnation and sin and the end times and the war against Christmas. You're supposed to fear the things that your church made the fuck up, right? Because imaginary shit is the only kind of shit it can protect you from. If you wake up fearing for your children's souls, your preacher can do something about that. Or at the very least, they can, like, you know, they can do as much about it as anybody else because souls don't exist. But if you're afraid for their health, the preacher is useless. Now, it, being useless obviously isn't enough to dissuade a preacher all by itself, right? But the pandemic is especially problematic because it isn't hopeless. You know, somebody will save us from this threat, but the savior in this instance you know, as in all the other verifiable, measurable instances, will be religion's arch nemesis science. Yeah, I mean, religion, I'm sure, will still take credit for it. Eventually, they'll thank God for the vaccine without a hint of irony. But they'll know they were bested and they'll know that we'll know they were bested. So what do you do, right? When you know you can't win the contest, you pretend it doesn't really matter. You downplay the stakes from the beginning. You make it clear to everybody around that you don't really care who wins this one. You're not even really trying very hard for this. And, and to make that stick in this instance, you have to start pretending the whole threat is overblown early on. Confident that science will save the day before it gets bad enough for your homicidal bullshit to have broad consequences. Right. So their instinctive dodge was to say, sure, a global pandemic that's killing thousands of people a day might seem bad. But when you compare that to the battle for your everlasting salvation, this is really just a scrimmage. Dying from covid sucks. Sure. But it's nothing compared to burning in hell for eternity and as frustrating and indeed deadly as that dodge is it's also an admission and it's an admission worth celebrating think about this we're in a fight where our opponents feel the need to start making excuses in advance of the match something tells me that's a good sign they're talking about your Jesus we interrupt this broadcast bring you a special news bulletin Joining me for headlines tonight are the igneous and sedimentary to my metamorphic Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. <laughs> Fellas, are you ready to rock? Let's do this schist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so much better than mine. I just wrote, I hope you're ready for some jokes that are flaky as shale. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Nailed it. I, yeah. I too Mike drop. can do <laughs> puns. I'm... <laughs> no, I can't. I need to go get stoned. So we'll take a quick break for our first sponsor this week. Hymns. Problem. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35. Why do guys turn to weird solutions or do nothing when they can turn to medicine and science? Hey, Noah, did my goat paste come in the mail yet? For the third time, Heath, no. Boo, boo. I need it. That's why there's 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. It's time to write a new chapter, one in which you have hair. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed medical providers and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. No more awkward in-person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. 4 connects you to licensed medical professionals online, which can save you hours completely confidential and discreet. Hey, Noah, Noah, did, still, um, did my go- Still, no. Oh. Man, today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners get their first visit absolutely free. Go to 4 slash scathing. That's 4 slash scathing. Full refund and price paid available for the first 90 days. Supply refund request must be made between 90 and 180 days after product shipment delivers. Prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash scathing. Hey, Noah, if you see he tell him that nacho dip his mom ordered, it's terrible. Will do, Eli. Will do. And now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, we have a quick reminder that there are no types of stupid that Trump doesn't embrace. 
And in case anybody had forgotten about that, he went full goddamn climate change denier on Tuesday and declared he knew better than all them Scientologists with their test tubes and their bleachers during a press event <laughs> about the eighth of the country or so that's on fire right now. Trump dismissed the unquestionable role climate change is playing in these ongoing disasters and well actually quote, well, I don't think science knows actually and actual quote. Fuck. Which is so crazy because he was up there with scientists, right? Like, yep. When your shitty uncle says that at Thanksgiving, which, by the way, is canceled this year because of the plague he caused, he's not <laughs> sitting next to the guy who can be like, oh, do you want to look at my chart? I, I have brought a chart. A chart. I, I'm <laughs> yeah. the guy. <laughs> that guy was also like, uh, take off that lab coat, Mr. President. I said, <laughs> for sure, we, we discussed it. You're not allowed to have a lab coat. Take it off. Take Krav it Maga. off. Krav Maga. Take it off. Krav Maga. <laughs> Krav Maga. Krav Maga. I poke. <laughs> so this casual dismissal of observable fact took place on Tuesday, exactly one day after the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration declared 2020s to be the hottest summer ever recorded in the Northern Hemisphere, even though it's technically not even over for another fucking week during a briefing about the wildfires in California. Trump, of course, is busy saying that the wildfires are there because California doesn't sweep their forests enough or whatever bullshit he's trying to sell. And California's secretary for national resources, whose job is to know this shit, pushed back. He pointed out that global warming is very much a thing, according to all of the science. And he adds, quote, if we ignore that science and sort of put our head in the sand and think it's all about vegetation management, we're not going to succeed together protecting Californians, end quote. And Trump's jaw dislocating response was, quote, it will start getting cooler. Just you watch. End quote. <laughs> Fuck is happening. I, th I think he's practicing for burning in hell with his followers. Uh, he's, he practicing? <laughs> Guys, there's thermite everywhere. You got to sweep that up. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so, so now in response, Crowfoot ripped Trump's skull open and fed him his own atrophied fucking brain while the room and indeed the nation cheered him on with <laughs> gleeful abandon. But then he like, he blinked really slow and he was still in the room and the question had just been asked. We realized we were just seeing what he wanted to do, but he demonstrated some super illusion restraint and opted and said to simply say, quote, I wish science agreed with you. End quote. <laughs> and of course, that brings us around to the dumbassery we started with, wherein Trump well actually is all of science. Uh, oh, sorry. What? I, I was blinking really slowly. <laughs> guys, what happened? Did it work? No. Obviously, this isn't the first time Trump has dismissed the consensus of science in general or climate science in particular. He'd been president less than six months when he wiped his ass with the Paris Climate Accord and his rollbacks of environmental regulations will probably eventually beat out his coronavirus response in terms of body count. And at the very same time, he was explaining how he couldn't hear the scientist la la la. Democratic nominee Joe Biden was managing to speak in coherent fucking sentences, right? Like, I mean, he was also addressing climate change with actionable goals and a proven track record of following the fucking science and shit like that. But let's be honest about where the goddamn bar is, at least when we compare the two. Yeah, and hey, if you need help, Scientific American has an opinion. <laughs> yes, this is amazing. For first time in 175 years. 175 years. <laughs> we really just wanted to do picture of birds, but you know what? What the fuck do they know? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we have to fucking do this. Was their cover? And in MacArthur, grant me COVID news. California pastor and police sketch of Mr. Peanut's great grandfather, John MacArthur, <laughs> saw Noah's challenge a few weeks uh, ago to let some people spit in his mouth and raised him a giant indoor church gathering in defiance of court orders. Again, again, because at least according to my neighborhood, COVID is a hallucination that only about a third of the country is having and everyone else is living a totally normal life or dying of it. Yep. Okay, well, you set up like a poker metaphor, and <laughs> there's no cards in this poker game, so we call, and <laughs> now we get to spit your mouth. That's great. Exactly. And I'm still social distancing, by the way, so just open your mouth and wait. I'll hit it from six feet eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, regular <laughs> listeners to the show will remember MacArthur for his constant 
efforts to fill a giant room with too many people in California since the very beginning of the COVID-19 crisis. Or perhaps, as I mentioned from a few weeks ago, when he used the existence of comorbidity to disprove the existence of COVID, saying, quote, there is no pandemic, end quote. It's gotten to the point where Christianity is as much defined by pretending real shit is fake as it is by pretending fake shit is real. <laughs> That's true. Pick a side. <laughs> That's true. So in spite of being fined a thousand dollars for <laughs> violating signage laws and the best. In, in spite of a literal judge's injunction against meeting indoors last week, John MacArthur's church went ahead and met indoors again this week, posting yep. photos on Twitter of hundreds, if not nearly a thousand worshipers sitting right the fuck next to each other. And I love how that fine happened for the signage. <laughs> yeah. The church put up a sign mm -hmm. that says, it's your fault if you come in here and get COVID. We're not responsible. So Los Angeles County taped up a notice right under that sign that said, <laughs> yes, the fuck you are responsible. That's illegal. Here's your bill for a thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> One last thing about this story. So MacArthur actually began the service by reading out loud the legal restrictions that are on his church so that everyone there would know they were breaking the law, I guess. And then he added, quote, Obviously, this is not constitutional, but more importantly, it goes against the will of the Lord of the church who calls us to gather. Amen. And then no? nobody said question? amen. Nobody said amen. So then he said, so look at the person next to you and say, I don't know who you are, but I'm so glad I'm sitting next to you. End real quote. Jesus. And say it quick because the clock's ticking for all you motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. And in the cutting pledge news, nice. Donald Trump, Fantastic. technically a grown adult of 74 <laughs> years, <laughs> failed a kindergarten oral exam yep. last week. Mm -hmm. Yep. During a 9-11 memorial service in Pennsylvania, he couldn't make it past the Pledge of Allegiance without embarrassing himself. Now, <laughs> to his credit, he was able to do the part with his hand on his chest, which is tricky. And, you know, that's tripped him up in the past. <laughs> but he was not able to make it all the way through the entire 31 words of that kindergarten oral exam. And he failed it the best way possible. He left out the under God part. What? And what I love about this is that this was the thing for someone. <laughs> yeah. Someone was sitting at home because of the plague Trump caused, watching this in between news breaks about the world being on fire, and they thought to themselves, ain't nobody forget to wish Jesus a cheers during the America prayer. <laughs> yeah. I'm voting for Joe Biden. <laughs> Maybe he'll lose one vote. Great. So <laughs> normally... This would be a complete non-story for everyone except a few insane Christian people like Eli just described, and also every homeroom teacher I've ever had in school. <laughs> they made a big deal about that, but the timing was just too perfect. In case anybody missed it, Trump accused the Democratic Party of being evil, godless Muslim demons for removing the words under God from the pledge during the Democratic National Convention last month. They did not. That no. did not happen. There's mm -mm. video of the standard... Christian jingoism chant happening during all four nights of that convention. But now there's also video of Trump trying to mumble along with the pledge <laughs> with his tiny little speaking aperture restricting his airflow mm -hmm. and then just completely stopping for a second when the under God part happens. It's not clear what the explanation is, but none of them are good that I can no. think of. So like... <laughs> Either he actually forgot the lyrics for that part and tried to be the guy pretending to go along with the song and couldn't do that part, or he's secretly atheist and didn't figure he'd be on camera while standing on a stage in front of a news crew at a 9-11 memorial as president of the United States, or his attention span literally maxes out at 22 words. <laughs> what else could it be? Right. Yeah, his supporters are now stuck with minion of the accursed one or dumber than the average five-year-old, and the right answer is both, but they're not allowed yeah. to admit either. It's pretty fucking great. Yeah, it's a good day for us. Pretty great. And in Air Baphomet and Beelzebub news, Close. author Baphomet Forbes, and Beelzebub. Them, yeah, that's what too. Yep. For. Author 
Forbes 30 under 30 marketer and man who looks like he always just won an argument with himself in the mirror, Frederick <laughs> Joseph, took to Twitter to complain about an Airbnb he stayed in last week because it was run by Satan. Well, okay, but to be fair, when the GPS directions kept telling him to turn down, he should have seen that coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's on him. So here's the tweet that he sent out to 93,000 followers. Quote, we just drove three hours, my eight-year-old brother for a getaway, and the house we arrived at ended up having seemingly satanic items and stuff for witchcraft rituals. We had to leave because my brother and the rest of us were frightened. But at Airbnb won't refund me, end quote. And luckily, he included photos of said satanic items, which include a photo of a lady with her shirt not on, a tiny statue of Baphomet, and a wind-up toy of a dog fucking a lady. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And honestly, it's probably good that that wind-up toy was there because it clearly distracted this guy from the copy of Pale Blue Dot by Carl Sagan that was right behind the toy on the bookshelf. <laughs> yeah. Now, for the record, the host actually offered to remove the offending items, but Joseph insisted on a refund, which he was granted due to the nudity in the picture, which he had failed to mention to Airbnb in his original request. Well, I guess he had originally just emailed that there were witches and Satan at the house he had rented and waited for the money to hit his credit card. <laughs> yeah. There's also a picture of an outdoor tub, like on a porch in the listing. And my favorite part is the reply tweet from this guy's friend that says, the outdoor tub is convenient for bloodletting outside and washing away the evidence. Oh, <laughs> Man, that makes those Cialis commercials so much more sinister, right? It does. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It also means his friend is familiar with what's convenient yeah, for no, he's thought it through. Yeah, no, he's thought about that before, yeah. One other thing about this story, it seems that Joseph is only worried about Satan when he doesn't need his help attacking political opponents. So for a guy who could not possibly stay a second longer in a house with a wind-up toy, the Church of Satan pointed out that he actually did tweet at them and request them to curse Trump in 2017. So... He might not stay there, but he's willing to network with the goat demon. Right. Yeah, no, this is not prejudice. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I've got to check and see if there's a Kickstarter or something for cursing Trump. So we're going to take a quick break to hear from our second sponsor this week, My Sheets Rock. Okay, Heath, how is this? Okay, no, no, no. I'm telling you, I think we need to go back to the left ankle. Now, the I'm whole not, thing feels off. I'm not going hey, back guys, to it. Guys, we should, why are you using angle. a compass to tuck Heath into bed? Oh, got no choice, Noah. I mean, we don't want him to be too hot or too cold. Yeah, exactly. That's the worst. So I'm telling you, like two more degrees on the right thigh, and I think we got it. Uh, okay, okay. But why don't you guys just use the bedding brand I discovered? It's called My Sheets Rock. My Sheets Rock? Yes, and they do. This company has reinvented the sheets game. Their sheets keep you cool so you'll sleep better than ever. My Sheets Rock created the regulator sheets, which are designed specifically to keep hot sleepers cool and colder sleepers comfortable. That's because these sheets are made from the best bamboo rayon, which transfers body heat two times more effectively than regular cotton sheets, so you can experience your best night's sleep yet. They sent us a set to try, and it's like sleeping on a cloud, a cloud that cares about my comfort. Wow. I've always wanted a cloud to care about my comfort. But Noah, what if I don't believe you? Don't believe me? Their five-star customer reviews speak for themselves. Huh. Plus, they offer a 90-day risk-free trial and free shipping and returns. Check out My Sheets Rock at MySheetsRock.com slash scathing and enter our code scathing for 10% off and free shipping. That's MySheetsRock.com slash scathing, code scathing. All right, Eli, just uh, put, put the compass away. I think we can just use my sheets rock. Fine, but the winch set stays. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I can still use that. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she wants. If it's a legitimate rape. It makes you a slut, right? It, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in misogyny. So that list of crimes against humanity that the Trump administration hasn't been credibly accused of is getting really hard to see with the naked eye, huh? 
And since there's so much shit I could be referencing when I say that, I suppose I should specify that I'm thinking specifically of the whistleblower complaint that an ICE detention center in Georgia is performing mass hysterectomies on Spanish-speaking detainees. This allegation comes from one Don Wooten, who filed a complaint on Monday alleging, quote, jarring medical neglect, end quote, like refusing to test symptomatic detainees, falsifying medical records, and failing to take minimal precautions to keep known cases of COVID-19 from spreading. And as if that's not terrible enough, the complaint also includes details of one doctor at the facility that's performing an abnormally high number of hysterectomies, often on patients that said later that they didn't understand why they were getting the operation or even what exactly was happening. So, yeah, I know I'm supposed to try to mix in a joke here and there, but holy fuck. There's a point where I just can't bring myself to summon a pun and forced to sterilization is way over that line. The complaint quoted several unnamed detainees interviewed by an advocacy group called Project South, including one woman who said, quote, we've questioned among ourselves like, goodness, he's taking everybody's stuff out. That's his specialty. He's the uterus collector, end quote. And another who summed it up by likening the center to, quote, an experimental concentration camp, end quote. Now, at this point, we're only talking about allegations, though there are similar stories from several detainees. So far, the reports don't mention any physical evidence. So sure, there's no way to know at the moment if this is actually happening and to what extent it's happening. But regardless of how this shakes out, we've reached a point where our government, you know, the one we pay for, is accused of a form of genocide. And our general conclusion is, yeah, that does sound like our government. And, oh, in case you're wondering, yes, the Irwin Detention Facility where this is happening is less than 70 miles from my house. Just like the Ahmaud Arbery shooting, the Christian leader who slapped that reporter's ass that we talked about last week, and a story about cops shooting at a car full of kids that you probably didn't even hear about because all the horrible shit down here drowned it out. Because the universe has conspired to remind the world that I live in the geographical asshole of America. So after a heavy-ass humorless story like that, I owe you some kind of good news. I looked far and wide, and the best I can come up with is a law in Queensland, Australia, that priests now definitely have to report child sex abuse that they hear about in confession. Though there's no word if that counts shit their guilty consciousness tell them about. Also, international pariah and hype man for lady chore Stephen Anderson finally got kicked off of YouTube, y'all. But if that isn't enough to cheer you up, I get it. So one last piece of good news. If I ever snap and go anti-misogynist superhero, it doesn't look like I'm going to have to put much mileage on the twin mobile to make a difference. And with that fanfic story prompt, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. Next up in headlines, we have a story about Jesus Christ, Moses, Nat Turner, and Candace Owens Hmm. And, of course, the only person who could connect those dots is presidential candidate Kanye West. That is true. Yes. Here's the uh, the yarn between those pushpins, as far as I can tell. Kanye is quite certain he's the reincarnation of an important historical figure, but he can't seem to decide on which one. It looks like he's got it narrowed down to either Jesus, Moses, Nat Turner, or possibly a combination of all three, and also... He's a big fan of Candace Owens, who is horrible. Uh, Well, look, I mean, he's at least as much reincarnation of Nat Turner as he is presidential candidate. So why the fuck not? You know, maybe you can run for reincarnation of Moses. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, honestly, that's so much less dangerous than his current plan. Right. We can bring him to a wave pool, turn it on when he waves his hands. Fun for the whole family. Absolutely. So as most of you already know, Kanye is running for president of the United States, mostly in Oklahoma, one of the only (laughs) states where he's on the ballot. And with his campaign trail being pretty compact, that gave him plenty of time to be the physical embodiment of cognitive dissonance this week, as he is wont to be. On one side of his brain, he's fighting for the black community, which is great. But on the other side, he's a Christian fundamentalist who thinks he might be Jesus and recently performed a Sunday service concert from the middle of a lake in Georgia, <laughs> appearing to walk on water. And the video is pretty amazing. 
he walks out into the middle of this lake to meet his gospel choir. And he's he's trying to do this big dramatic entrance and be all magical. But his kids are angrily walking on the water with him oh. down this stupid ramp just below the surface. And they're my fucking favorite. It's the best. He's like, behold, it is I. Kanye and I shoulder checked by my six year old son. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got me there, Eve. You got daddy. <laughs> so last week, the two sides of Kanye's brain smashed into each other. Never. And a good he thing. started tweeting about it. First, he refused to make any more music until he's released from his contract with Sony and Universal, adding, On God, in Jesus' name, come and get me skier emoji. Uh, no idea about that last part, but the message seems to be that lots of musicians in the black community are making big money for mostly white executives. That's when he described the music industry as slavery and declared himself both Nat Turner and Moses of the Bible, you know, for helping free slaves, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a little grandiose, but again, there's an important message in there. But then he completely ruined his good message by tweeting... Thank you, Candace Owens, and oh. recommending her new book about how the Republican Party is super helpful to the black community. And that was right after Owens did an interview with Blaze TV and described the affirmation of transgender kids as the literal work of Satan. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out it doesn't really matter if Kanye cleaned up graffiti earlier in the day. That's not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Fuck to be you. fair. Saying that you're freeing the slaves by fighting for a bigger chunk of your millions of dollars while throwing <laughs> the most vulnerable kids in our country under the bus is a way better representation of the Republican Party than an elephant. True so that, yeah. you know, I don't know if we can get that in a single cartoon, <laughs> but yeah. So this is what happens when religion worms its way into politics. You get someone like Kanye, a billionaire, literally a billionaire with a huge platform and good intentions. Yeah, generous. But some good intentions. But then he becomes a fundamentalist Christian and starts hanging out with that group of people. And whenever he starts talking about fighting for racial and economic justice, those people tell him about how Donald Trump was chosen by God and he gets all confused and he starts wearing safety slippers for a toddler and endorsing bigots. <laughs> and his, his heels get hurt because the, the slippers are way too small. Yeah. New rule between Trump and Kanye. I think we need a salary cap on presidential candidates for a few years. Yeah. Might do us some good. Right. Just for saying. all the years? That would be yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Just all of them. And in you got to be cranny in me news. <laughs> in today's terrifying Christ. landscape of misery and bad news, sometimes it's good to sit back and be grateful for the good things in life. Like puppies, marshmallow peeps, and Ukrainian homophobes who blame COVID on gay people getting COVID. Yeah, and just for the record, that's by far the most coherent section of Eli's vision board, by a lot. <laughs> so listeners may actually remember Patriarch Filare of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, who blamed the pandemic on gay marriage, saying the virus was, quote, God's punishments for the sins of men, the sinfulness of humanity. I mean, same-sex marriage. End quote. <laughs> it's the marriage part that he's focused on. Okay. Yeah. I guess Phil Array spent a little too much time thinking about gay marriage for God's liking because his church confirmed that the 91-year-old has been diagnosed with COVID on Facebook this week, saying, quote, We informed that during planned testing, His Holiness Patriarch Phil Array of Kiev and all Rush Ukraine tested positive for COVID-19. Now His Holiness Bishop is undergoing treatment at a hospital. End quote. The only possible conclusion here that is that he was secretly gay married. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I know that all of us here at The Scathing Atheist are wishing filet of fish all the best in his recovery. Oh, but, sure, you know, sure. just in case the 90-year-old doesn't beat this thing, these things happen. Pretty sure he's going to be greeted by God and her life partner at the pearly gates. So <laughs> that's going to be awkward. Oh, this guy's perfect. You're going to be our lawn gnome. Great. Just, uh, stand right there. And in broadside of a Barna news tonight, Christian pollster George <laughs> Barna has been making the rounds to whatever SPLC listed hate group will have him, desperately blaming the relative lack of Christianity for all the national problems that Christianity has created. 
And it differed from the suggestion that we end partisanship by all becoming Republican, only in that it didn't rise to that level of theoretical effectiveness. Yeah, uh, obviously, he wants us to put our right hand in and take our right hand out way before we all join the theocratic ethnic state he's in charge of. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely agreed, Eli. Republicans should all take the Gom Jabbar test from Dune. Yep. <laughs> oh, two all votes. <laughs> two votes. Gay fear is the mind killer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's start with his recent appearance on Washington Watch, where an ambulatory hate crime, Tony Perkins, invited Barna to opine on why everything is so inescapably terrible under the leadership that they advocated for and continue to support compared to anyone else who has ever been in charge of anything ever. And Barna explained that it was because of America's profound spiritual deficiency. That's right. The wildfires, the pandemic, the racial tensions, the cratering economy, the civil unrest and the naked corruption that have characterized the most evangelical administration in American history is because it wasn't Christian enough. And thus, Ooh. the solution to those problems, obviously, is to do the exact same thing they did to stoke all the problems in the first place, but harder. He might as well say not enough gender reveal parties. Is <laughs> right. <answer>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So Barna was surprisingly candid when he followed this up on Wall Builders Live, a show hosted by anal fungus removal specialist David Barton. Hey, I'm tied with him when it comes to being honest about what his profession is. During that discussion, <laughs> he pointed out that if you want kids to buy the kind of bullshit Christianity is selling, you really have to nail them down before they can outthink the evangelical worldview. Yeah. Quote. A person's worldview is going to start developing at 15 to 18 months of age. Interesting. <laughs> it will be almost fully formed by the time they reach the age of 13. End quote. Yeah. So, yeah, he just straight up admitted that by the time they can, like, name objects and picture books and stack rings from largest to smallest, you have missed your cognitive window. <laughs> okay. Well, this is why I made sure that there is both a zip liner and a mango nectar baby flashcard for my son. No matter how many times Anna rips them up, I keep adding them back in, throwing them back on there. <laughs> and finally tonight, in white wedding news. Yeah! A very, very tragic tale of D-list star crossed lovers is finally coming to an end. David A.R. White oh, oh! and Andrea Logan White, the Matthew Broderick and Sarah Jessica Parker of the Christian stage, <laughs> they're getting divorced. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so David cited irreconcilable sharp face and Andrea cited irreconcilable permanent dampness. Uh, they both mentioned severe lack of talent. And despite making a career of judgmental Christian movies with very toxic messages, including one called Marriage Retreat that's literally about the sin of divorce. Yep. They're officially splitting up and going to hell. Aww. Wah, wah. Don't worry about losing your wife, Davey. I'm, I'm sure Jerry Falwell Jr. has one you can use. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Dave, I feel like your secret plan for Christian movie groupies is not going to pan out like you're hoping, bud. I don't... <laughs> I don't think it's going to go well. All right. Well, here's the announcement we got from David A.R. White about this tragic news. Uh, you know, it's a very dark, solemn moment in his life. Sure. So he fired up Instagram <laughs> and posted the following. <laughs> I pray you're doing well during these uncertain times. Thank and you. that each day you're reminded of the constant and unwavering love of the Lord. Okay. And now that he's firmly established that 2020 is evidence of the loving God of the Bible. He also <laughs> added, we'd appreciate privacy in this matter that I'm telling you about on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Hashtag David's privacy. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, originally he tried to get this somber announcement on Chris Evans' meaty log, but they couldn't come to a sponsorship <laughs> agreement. And so, whole thing. <laughs> so, divorce you know, it's obviously a, a very uh, a difficult blah, blah, blah. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck David. Yeah, fuck David. This is the guy who founded PureFlix. <laughs> fuck you. Yes. PureFlix is responsible for God's Not Dead about how atheist philosophy departments banned metaphysics from this country's academia. 
I had to listen to the fucking newsboys because of this. <laughs> I had to hear a band in the park covering the fucking newsboys and realize that I know what song I'm hearing right now. <laughs> that had to happen to me because of this. They also made Brother White about literally taking up the white man's burden. Yeah. Seriously, that's what that's about. Yeah. yeah. Now, in fairness, Pure Flix also gave us Revelation Road 2, <laughs> in which former NFL superstar Brian Bosworth yeah, okay. explodes a moving car with a mystical atheist war hammer, yes. flipping it through the air over and over. It's actually a moving car. He smashes it. Do you guys remember? Oh, so good. Yeah. Can't think about anything uh, else. Possibly the greatest mo moment in mo movie history. But yeah. then they also made Unplanned about the fucking shop vac with a wood chipper that they have at Planned Parenthoods. And <laughs> now David's asking for privacy and consideration. So, no. Yeah. No, absolutely not. <laughs> You're a monster and a hypocrite. No. And that means... We're going to go ahead and put 30 seconds on the clock. Oh, really? Ooh. Speed roast, David A.R. White, go. All right. The wind's um, good. The uh, wind is good. You look like somebody left their Owen Wilson fucked all on their dashboard. <laughs> uh, producer, writer, husband. Who'd have thought the thing he'd turn out to be best that was acting? <laughs> uh, you look like surfboard cancer. Uh, Ooh, you, know, yes. you have the physique of a pile of laundry that seems like it should have tipped over by now. <laughs> uh, you look like you gave up the Backstreet Boys for youth ministry. <laughs> You look like a failed audition for the middle of an evolution chart. You look like wet sandals smell. Uh, David's so two-faced, people flip him to make difficult decisions. <laughs> you look like your goatee transplant is rejecting your face. <laughs> so your your haircut looks like it was done with that shop back wood chipper from Planned Parenthood. <laughs> uh, uh, David's hair is so bad, his salon had to change their name to Just Okay Cuts. Um, I, I don't like your movies they're, <laughs> they're, bad. You, they're bad movies bad. You, have, you have very little talent movies oh I got a good one you're a filthy adulterer condemned specifically in Luke 16 18 Matthew 5 32 and 9 6 through 9 1 Corinthians 7 10 through 11 and 15 Romans 7 2 Hebrews 13 14 and Mark 10 22 among others uh, you look like you tried to negotiate your parental visitations with puka shell <laughs> <laughs> um, you look Divorced face. <laughs> All does. right. He does. Well done. So I guess now we are to this week's headlines as Andrea Logan White is to David because we're ending it there. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. Actually, we ended it amiably so the uh, fucking analogy breaks down. Anyway, we, we, when we come back, Eli will learn that the first eight books were the good parts of the Bible. <laughs> hey, podcast listener. You know, whether you escaped from religion yesterday or 20 years ago, you probably have some weird mental hangups about your down there parts. That's right. From homophobia to transphobia to kink and slut shaming, religion is full of ways to make you scared of your wetlands. And that's why we'd like to take a moment right now to officially give you permission to buy yourself a sex toy. That's right. You buy yourself a sex toy. And I know what you're thinking. Me? A sex toy? No way. Yes. Yes, you and yes, way. No matter who you are or what you're into, there's a sex toy for you. But don't go to the sketchy vape store slash sex shop at your local mini mall. Buy sex stuff for your fun bits at adamandeve.com. Adamandeve.com is a sex positive online retailer that'll sell you a sex toy and send it right to your house on the down low. They've got reviews, recommendations, and helpful information that you can view from the comfort of your computer. Plus, you can get almost any one item 50% off when you use our code SCATHING at checkout. And best of all, assuming you use your sex toy with consenting adults, we can personally guarantee that you aren't doing anything wrong, you aren't weird, and you deserve it. Yes, you do. So get your literal freak on at adamandeve.com. And don't forget to use the code SCATHING at checkout for 50% off any one item adamandeve.com because sex toys are real and God is not. Hello, I'm Mitch McConnell. I'm Susan Collins. And I'm Ted Cruz. And with election day just 47 days away, we're asking you, please don't vote. We all represent states that are generally considered solid red or solid blue, which is great for us because it means that you won't vote and we'll get to keep our jobs. That's right. See, our secret is, while you're not voting for president because you think your vote doesn't matter, there are dozens of way closer races and referendums that you're also not voting on. 
But you know who is voting? The people who elected us. Yes, the people who elected us are such reliable voters that we can dedicate pretty much our entire election effort to voter suppression because we know that our supporters can probably overcome the blocks that we put up. And we're betting that you, yes, you personally, probably won't vote. So whatever you do, don't order that mail-in ballot. And don't check your registration status at youhavetofuckingvote.com because we like things just the way they are. And if you don't vote, that's the way they'll stay. That's youhavetofuckingvote.com to check your registration because all we need to win is for you to do nothing. We've now made it through three of the oxymoronically titled historical books of the Bible in skit form. This is the section that exists because something had to connect the Pentateuch to the wisdom books and Jews hadn't invented yada, yada, yada yet. And today we set sail on 1 Samuel, the start of a six book stretch that is somehow repetitive compared to yada, yada, yada in this month's installment of Bible Peace Theater. All right, you guys uh, ready for the next book of the Bible? I is Samuel. Um, no, no, it's First Samuel. Right, yeah, because there's two. Well, First Samuel one. Wait, there's two Samuels. Second Samuel. Right, there like are two. Twos. There are two. Well, okay. there's two twos. One after each Samuel. So two Samuel ones after each Samuel two. No, two Samuels first and second, both of which have a two. Ah, so you could say two's on first Samuel. Hate you so much. Okay, so what happens in this one? All right, so once upon a time. Why why are you on my lap? You said once upon a time. Okay, fair, I did. All right, so once upon a time. Mm -hmm. Are you guys both comfy? Yes, I make a living. Right, so... Once there's this guy named Elkanah who he had Went over two wives. Just stop, stop, stop hitting. No hitting. He had, two, he had two wives, Hannah, who hadn't born him children, and Penina, who had. Uh, Penania. Okay, definitely not pronounced that way. You want Melania in the sketch or not? Okay, yes, yes, I do. Melania. Ah, uh, my wives, Hannah and Penina. The time has come to make our sacrifices. Just said it, baby. I'm going to glow the grass fish like it's one wedge to Greg. Yes? Is that a possible answer to what she just said? Yes? Yes. Grinkle crack Joe. (laughs) Oh, Hannah, what's the matter? Oh, I'm just crying because I haven't given you any children. Oh, come on. Aren't I just as good as children? (laughs) Um, well, that's a weird thing to say to your wife. Okay, um, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Here's an extra portion for you to give to God, you know, because he closed up your womb. Oh, gee, um, thanks. And, and because you're my favorite. Uh, I'm a standing right here. Yep, you sure are. Would you rather I cheated on you with a porn star while you give birth to our first son? You know what, that's fair, all right, now, now dry those tears and ask God for a son, huh? Okay. God, if if you give me a son, I'll I'll make him your servant and I'll never ever cut his hair. Please, oh please, oh please, oh please, oh please, oh please. So then Eli. Yes. Uh no, actually the the character is named Eli. Oh, nice. This is Eli. Yeah, so he's a priest. Um, he sees her praying, and he thinks she's drunk. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Okay, please, lady, please, come on. Please, on you get. What? Come on. What? Come on. This what? is a place of worship. What? Uh, seriously? Seriously, you're drunk at the tabernacle. No. Cut it out. No, 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 I'm not drunk. I'm praying. Oh. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So yeah. I I knew that. I was just, yeah. you know, because a pregnant lady drinking would I'm not, be. I'm not pregnant. Hmm? Oh, yes. No, I knew. I, of course you're not pregnant. You're just. Nothing? Yeah. No? Uh, not going to no. fill that in? No. Anyway, uh, hey, what's that? Huh? Oh, God just told me your prayers are going to come true. Oh, oh, they are? Oh, hooray. Yeah, so that I think should clear up any second now. Wait. 
what, what I think. Jeez, can you people wear a sign or something? Right, well, drunk mistake or not, the next morning, Hannah conceived a son, and soon Samuel was born. Well, how about that? A son. I bet you're pretty happy. I sure am, husband. And just as soon as he's weaned, I'm going to give him to God. Sorry, wait, you, you're going to give the son that you prayed for to God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, just like I promised. So, so you prayed for a son so that mm -hmm. you could just give birth to him and give him away? Well, when you put it that way, I, I did not think this through. No, you did not. Eli, Eli. Hey, yeah, what's up? Oh, hi, it's, uh, it's I, lady. What? I mean, praying lady. What's, hello, praying hi. lady. Yes, hi. Um, well, I prayed for a son and I got him. Oh, that is great. Yep, yes, God, is. God sure and, is. And, and now he's yours. He's what now? Uh, he's yours. I give him to you. Ah, uh, that, thank you. But we're actually pretty oh, good. Oh, God. You are so awesome. Oh, you're praying again in the middle of And the you make blind people see and dead people live again. Okay, very much does not do that. And you are so awesome and so great. It's like a whole chapter of this, just and, so people at home. Know. And may you break your enemies into itty, itty, bitty pieces. Okay. Right, so, so Samuel grows up serving the Lord, but Eli's sons were sons of Belial. Wait, what's the sons of Belial? Isn't that, isn't that guy, the guy with the donkey? No, no, that was Belaim. Be, 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 Belial oh. is a stand-in for bad people. In Hebrew, I, I think it just literally means worthless. Worthless. Got it. Uh, my sons, my sons, come, come here. Uh, one second, Dad, one second. Uh, we're just finishing up this loud and aggressive game of foosball we've been having uh -huh. in a public space uh -huh. for the last 40 minutes. Uh -huh. then, yeah. we'll, then we'll be right over. Yeah, yeah you're going down because you're gay. The, no, no, you're gay. No, you're gay. 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 You're gay. 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 You're okay. gay person. Okay. Okay. Gay. okay. Well, uh, boys, it's your job to collect the meat for the temple today. So if you could try not to be the worst while yeah, you Yeah, nice. Totally going to gank that bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. You love bacon so much, you're gay for it. No, you're gay. You're gay for yeah, bacon. Uh, you're, gay. you're gay. Yeah, you're, you're the gay for the bacon. Since gay came to gay town. Gay bacon. Okay. Right, but see, Samuel, Samuel is really good and serves the Lord. Wait, I thought Samuel was a baby. Oh, oh, he is. All right, kiddo. Don't forget your little ephod. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. All right, now you scoot. Yeah, that's a great kid you got there. Oh, well, thanks, Eli. Yeah, no problem, Hannah. So I, I actually spoke to God, and you're going to have three more sons and two daughters. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, and you don't even have to give those ones away. Those oh, ones well, are yours. That's good. That's great. Oh, hey, look, there are your boys. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi, hi, boys. Gay. Gay. You're so gay. No, you're gay. You're the how, gayest thing uh, ever. How, how are your kids doing? Oh, my, my sons? I, you know, they won't stop fucking people at the entrance to the tabernacle. So I'm pretty sure God is going to kill them. Oh, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Gay. 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 You just fucked a gay dude. So that night, God appears to Eli with some bad news. Eli. Hey. Hey, Eli. Uh, yes, God? I mean, seriously, us again? This is why we hired Don. It needed to be me for the Eli joke to work. Oh, no, yeah, it's a great joke. I bet they love it. Rolling in the aisles because it's your name. Okay, are you God or my depression? I mean, I'm omnipresent, so both? Great. Awesome. Thank you. What's up? All right, look, there's no easy way to say this, but it's about your sons. Ooh, yeah, what about them? Okay, look, I don't say this lightly, because believe me, I have some experience in this area, but your kids, they're the worst. The worst. Yeah, yeah, no, they, they are. So, I'm going to have to cut off your arm. Oh, my, my arm? Really? Ah, that sucks. Nope, no, not really. That's just a metaphor. 
Oh, phew, because I, I thought you were actually going to... What I'm actually going to do is kill your sons and curse you so that nobody in your house ever lives to be old. Oh, wow, that is way, way worse. And, and I'm going to make sure someone else is the high priest from now on. And your family is going to have to, like, beg for crusts of bread to live for the rest of your life and for all generations. Whew. Uh, any chance of getting my arm cut off instead? I'm afraid not. Okay. Well, that is, that is rough. But, but, hey, here, before you go, have a copy of Don Jr.'s book. Oh, uh, thanks? Yeah, I had to buy like 500,000 of these things. I've got them everywhere. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, yikes. Like I said, I get it with shitty kids. So with Eli fully cursed, it was time for God to appear to Samuel for the first time. Good night, Eli. Good night, Samuel. Uh, I'm sorry God is going to kill your sons and cur curse your whole family line. It, it happens, kid. Don't worry about it. Uh, hey, hey, you want this book you gave me? No. Yeah, that is, that is fair. That is fair. Samuel. Samuel. Uh, yes? Eli? Hmm? Uh, I didn't say anything, Samuel. Uh, pretty sure I just heard your voice. Samuel. Samuel. Yeah, okay, J just now. You, you, you did it again. That, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, no, you know what? That must be God talking to you. Really? Because super duper sounds like you. Does, does it sound like me? I mean, maybe like you doing Cartman from South Park, like really badly. It's not clear. Okay, everyone's a critic today. Yeah, that's God. Just, uh, you know, tell him you're his servant and, and see what he wants. Mm. Sarah, Sarah, get in here. This thing is broken. You gotta hold down the button. That's what she said, am I right? <laughs> that's what she said, nice. Right? Um, no, it, it's, it's working. I, I'm here, and I'm your servant, I guess. I like this kid. I like how different his voice is from mine. At two, Sarah, at two. Anyway, kid, listen up. I fucking hate Eli. I'm going to get him big, big time. And if you tell him or anybody else, I will kill you and your whole family. You got me? Um, is this really what happens in the Bible? Yeah, that God threatens a small child? Yeah, bet your sweet ass it is. Uh, okay. All right, stay fresh, cheese bags. Okay. Bye. So, uh, what did God want? Uh, well, I, I can't tell you, or bad stuff is going to happen to you and to my family. Does that sound like God to you? Yeah, no, that sounds exactly like God, kid. So yeah, don't huh. sweat it. Just uh, get some sleep, right? Okay. I'm nine. You are. You are nine right now. Nine years old. Mm-hmm. A child. And with the promise that this story doesn't get less fucked up in the coming chapters, we're going to wrap for the night, but we'll be back next month with even more Bible Peace Theater. Before we lay me down to sleep, I want to remind you that you have to fucking vote. And if you're a listener outside the U.S. that can't vote, I just ask you to bear with me for another 47 days. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight. But we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday. And an even newer episode of our half sister show, Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I'd be in breach of format if I neglected to thank Keith Enright for being precisely as married as David A.R. White is now. I need to thank Eli Bosnick for being such a great exemplar of all the happiness that David A.R. White is missing out on these days. I need to thank the lovely and talented Lucy send illusions for not dropping my ass like I was David A.R. White. I need to thank Andrea Logan White for making this compliment theme so easy to nail down this week. Also want to thank Jay Burley 66 for providing this week's Farsworth quote back in December of last year. Again, big backlog. If you haven't heard yours, that doesn't mean we lost it. Appreciate your patience, bro. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people, atheists, Natalie, David, patron saint of podcast, Fruit of Hoops, Adam, Greg, that Belgian guy, Dan, and Brady, WC, Jonas, Shonas, Laura, and James. Atheists, Natalie, David, and Fruit, who are so badass cans of whoop-ass threaten to open them. Adam, Greg, that Belgian guy, and Dan, whose erections are measured on the Mohs scale of mineral hardness. And Anne, Brady, WC, Laura, and James, 
James, who are so hot they have coronal mass ejections. Together, these 13 thoroughly thankable thinkers of thoughtful thoughts thoughtfully threw us some specie this week by giving us money. If you, too, would like to be alliteratively immortalized in our archives, you can make a per-episode donation to patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help with that doggy in the window isn't going to save up for itself, you can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review anywhere they'll let you do that, and following at PIATPod on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingads.com. Nope. Let's, we're just going to cut all these things I'm saying. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.